let's move on. I, I want to save our sneaky position group for the end. So I'm going to skip that one. Let's talk about Texas A&M's defensive line group here. Yeah, it's it's pretty loaded here. Okay, you get Nick Gordon, who was the Big Ten sack leader, right? Absolutely dominated the spring game, right? Guy was a Brian Hyde native, uh, right there near College Station. Yeah, this guy's that guy's pretty good at this game. He's pretty good at football. Okay, if you thought that, you know, oh yeah, they lost a lot with Walter Nolan. Okay, what about Shamar Turner? Like his upside, you know, he potentially's got first round written all over him if he produces the way that he can, you know. And Shamar Stewart, I know Coach Elko has had wonderful words to say about Shamar Stewart uh, pairing out, pairing up there on the edge with Nick Gordon. And then also, look at some other guys too. Like DJ Hicks, as a sophomore, as a true freshman, he was fantastic, I thought, in his limited role, right? But you had uh, Isaiah Rakes, you know, transfer out of there. You had Walton Nolan transfer out of, the, for out of there in the interior. So you're going to need someone to step up in the interior that means Shamar Turner probably is moving to the inside. You're going to get DJ Hicks. It's going to need to step up, who I think can absolutely, I mean, former five-star, absolute weapon. Um, and then also, like, Gabriel Brown, Lil Dindy, Albert Reggie's, like, Samu, <laughs> Papa, <laughs> Big Papa there. I, I think the interior, I think, is going to be just fine. It's the edges that I think are going to just absolutely take this defensive line to another level in terms of pass rush from that standpoint. Because you also got, I mean, Cash is how Nick Scorn has already talked about in an interview after the spring game. Uh, he was asked, oh, who's the guy that's stepping up right now? Cash is how is the guy. He's the guy that he said, no, that guy knows how to pass rush. He comes from Bowling Green. He was mega productive there in the Mac, you know, and it's like, oh, is it going to adjust? Whatever. I mean, if Nick Scorn is saying that this dude's balling out, I'm going to, I'm going to take his word for it. So, and it's not even including guys like Malik Silla from Katy, you know, who just continues to put on weight, continues a uh, former top 100 player that, um, and then also Anai White from Pennsylvania, a guy that you, I don't know, it was pretty scary, thought he might go in the portal, but just blazing off the, the edge. You know, you got your, your fastballs and you got your changeups and you got your curveballs on this defensive line. So I, I think it's it's pretty full. Like, like this whole entire squad, everyone has a role. Everyone is very talented. This is one of the best defensive line groups in the entire country. I know we just talked about Michigan and how good they were, right? And we'll talk about another defensive line group down the road. But this is certainly one of the best defensive line groups in the entire country. No, I, I absolutely agree. And to me, I love the versatile pieces that are in this group. You have your body eaters. You have your screamers off the edge. You have your just physical freaks in Stewart and and and. Uh... Uh, Scorton and as well as Turner, just a, a matchup night where inside or outside, and then Howell as well, veteran guy, seems to be impressing a ton. I want to ask you here though, similar to Michigan where they lost three guys uh, in the NFL draft, you Texas A&M lost thirty players to the portal, five of them on that D line, including four to Power Five schools. You got the Dill Diggs, obviously LT Overton, Isaiah Rakes going to Auburn eventually, and obviously the headliner Walter Nolan. I want to hear your thoughts on on Are you worried about the depth? Of this of this group here, because they lost five guys that could have been difference makers in this in this room, or are you not worried about that? Um, I guess you could say it's not as like deep as it was last year. Like DJ Hicks wasn't was hardly seeing the field last year. He only played in nine games. You know, that's depth right there. You know, that is depth. But the reality is, like, yeah, sure, Isaiah Rakes was like. Pretty good. The, the biggest loss is going to be McKinley Jackson, right? Like, an ab, we talk about like an absolute body eater. Like, that dude's 320 pounds. Um, just so powerful. You know, doesn't have a lot of finesse, you know, in his pass rush game. But in terms of like from a run stopping standpoint, like we saw in 2022 when he got hurt, that defense was completely different and they could not stop the run. They could not. And it literally was because of him, which is wild. So you're hoping that Shamar Turner you know, can be that guy while he's not as big, but definitely like a good football player in there. You're just really hoping that DJ Hicks can step up in the interior, right? And he's not like huge, more of a three tech, you know, than McKinley Jackson's like one tech, 6'5", 290 pounds. Um, yeah, so it is going to be interesting. I don't know that you have the same exact body eater that you had before. I mean, 
Albert Reg is, is 6'2", 325. So, yes, you know, he's just not quite as powerful as McKinley Jackson. But Fidel Diggs is also a big loss because he was insanely productive. But I'm not worried because if you're replacing Fidel Diggs with Nick Gordon, I mean, that's it's an upgrade. You know, There's, even though Fidel Diggs was fantastic, you know, uh, Nick Gordon is an upgrade on that edge. So I'm not worried about the depth. It just is interesting that interior defensive line, you don't have the same level of body eaters that you had in McKinley Jackson. And uh, I guess even Isaiah Rakes was, uh, I'd put him in that category, 6'2, 320 pounds. It'll be interesting to see what that interior defensive line looks like, especially with Shamar Turner moving to the interior. Now, Shamar Turner is like, he's close to 300 pounds. You know, he's a big guy, but he's not exactly one tech, you know? It's like, you don't have that not big old nose guard. So it'll be interesting to see how that role gets filled out. Or if they just go small, you know, and just go small and fast and, you know, rely on these linebackers, which you have a good one in Torrey and York, but you lose Ezra and Cooper to the draft. So it'll be really interesting to see how well this Aggie team defends the run this upcoming year because they did a fantastic job of it last year, certainly. Yeah, I, I do want to ask you here. Uh... You, Sean Spencer, our defense, new defensive line coach for Texas A&M. Uh, obviously, a lot has been made. You know, you lost Elijah Robinson over to Syracuse, who was an incredible recruiter, at cornerstone of A&M's program. Obviously, you're not going to expect you know to Spencer to be a guy like Elijah Robinson. But in terms of this D-line group, do you like Deshaun Spencer? You believe in the versatility? He's going to find the right pieces. To, to me, it looks like you have a ton of pieces here. And yes, you're going to have to almost you know. Play little, cut some guys out of position maybe to get the best four guys on the the field at once. Uh, how, how do you feel like he's going to handle the rotation, keeping guys fresh, but also putting them in the best possibilities to succeed? Look, I I mean, yeah, it's about Sean Spencer, but I think you're, the reality is you're giving Mike Elko more tools on this defensive line than he ever had uh, on this defensive line, which is crazy because he had guys like, the Marvin Leal, he had guys like Michael Clemens. Uh, he did work with Fidel Diggs at, at one point. Like, what I think is going to happen, right? Because you're not going to have all these three down sets, right? Because you don't have the body eaters to do that or three down lineman sets. Mike Elko has this tendency to like put five or six guys on the line of scrimmage, you know, and basically just say, hey, who's coming? Figure out who to block, you know, late shifts. I mean, I think Mike Elko is going to have a lot to work with. So I think it's like more on what Mike Elko wants this defense to be, you know, than it is about like managing these subs and, and all that. I, I think it's, I think that's just going to come naturally because we haven't even talked about Ryland Kennedy. I mean, so it, there's definitely, it's deeper on the edge for sure than it is on the interior, but you're just hoping for guys like DJ Dix and Gabriel Brownlow Dindy to really take that step and live up to their five star name, which I think they both can for sure. He also got Rodas Johnson, just another veteran guy coming over from Wisconsin. I do want to ask you here about that um, versatility that there is going to be. If there's five down linemen, who's going to be the guy? Who are the guys that can step back in pass coverage? Part of the reason why Dallas Turner was so valuable to Brian Flores and the Vikings is because he has that ability to do that. Who on this team can do that uh, for the NMD line room? You're talking about edges? Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, an eye white, you could say. But like, I don't know. Maybe Rylan Kennedy? I'm not sure. It, I'm not sure that's exactly how. I mean, Shamar Stewart's dropped in coverage some as well. I think he's athletic enough to do it. Him and I white, um, I think they're athletic enough to do it. Or even just like spy a quarterback. Or just sit in the middle of that soft zone right there. Actually, correction. Um, he is not he's Shamar Stewart does not drop in coverage. Now that I got the numbers in front of me. I, I think he's athletic enough to do I know he's huge. I know he's he huge. Is. But I think he he's athletic huge. enough to cover a tight end in the flat to go out and get a running back who's released on a little bit of a um you know, just an out route or whatever. But Dill Diggs did it a lot though. But Dill so Diggs who's gonna play Sam? Is it Scylla and Anai White? Well, you know, the question is is it like is it Nick Gordon? You know, like he played 131 coverage snaps. Like, but here's the thing: you don't want him dropping into coverage. You know, that's the thing. Like, he did it though. He did it at Purdue. You know, which is, I mean, but I do, I do think it helps you because at Purdue, I mean, 
what yes, I like Ryan Walters and I trust him defensively, but I trust Mike White or uh, Mike Huck a little bit more. But like he, Purdue, you didn't have other bodies in that room that can to really get after the pass rusher, and they still drop him in coverage with Scorden. I think yes, I do want him rushing the passer as much as he can, but you've got guys like Turner and Stewart and Howell and Hicks and Nye White out the end. Like you've got other pieces there where if you choose to to and everyone's sliding over to Scorden, we're we're gonna we're gonna chip him and we're gonna we're gonna slide over to him and you drop him back into coverage. That creates a huge mismatch on the backside there at the running back that the quarterback is not accounting for. And all of a sudden you get a, maybe a free free rusher on the backside there, which is pretty exciting. I do want to ask you this here. I want to just give some superlatives about this D-line group. I know this video is going a little bit long, but I hope you guys enjoy this content. Like and subscribe if you guys are AM fans or just college football fans in general. Uh, superlatives, best pass rusher in this group, pure pass rusher. Who leads the team in sacks? Or I guess, oh. yeah, who leads the team in sacks? It's Nick Scorden, man. It absolutely okay. is. 100%. You think he's both? You think he's both? He's going to lead the team in sacks and also uh, just the best pass, pure pass rusher on this roster. I think so, man. I think he's, like watching him in person, he is that good, man. He is that good. Honorable mention to to Turner and Stewart. Yeah, I mean Turner, like moving him inside, I I, I think that hinders his ability to get to the quarterback a little bit. Um, I mean he did have five sacks last year, but it was because he was playing on the edge more. You know, um, Shamar Stewart. I mean, he only got home twice last year, but uh, he had twenty six pressures. I mean, like he's a good player. He's got the tools. He looked really good in the spring game as well. It could be Stewart. That'd be, I think, uh, in my order because uh, in my order, it, I think it's got to be because I mean, I remember like listening to interviews of, like Chase Basantis, and they were like, "Oh, who's the hardest player to block?" Right? And he was like, "Oh, it's Shamar Turner." Like one thousand percent, you know. Now he didn't have to block McKinley Jackson because he was playing tackle at that point, but yeah. So for me, it's Nick Scorden, Shamar Turner, Shamar Stewart. Yeah, I love that. And uh, how about who's best against the run? Oh, well, I hope it's <laughs> man. I hope it's Gabriel Brownlow Dindy is what I hope it is. So I'm just gonna say that and and just hope that that's the case. But I I'm not sure that it's gonna be. I mean. Uh, yeah, or it's, it's I mean, it'll, maybe DJ Hicks. I'll go with DJ Hicks. I'll go with DJ yeah, Hicks. I, I like two young guys, two two sophomores. Uh, didn't they have that red shirt year as well? But it's more, yeah, it's more hope, more hopeful than it is uh, fact. You know, it's project. It's May right now. We're projecting to the fall. Uh, lastly, here, what's I know we talked about a bunch of names. Obviously, Nick Gordon. A guy you know, everyone's got on the radar. If you don't, obviously, you've seen him in first round mocks. Go look at the transfer portal rankings and see how highly thought of he is in the national media. What's one other name that you, A&M fans, that college football fans, SEC fans have to know? How about Notre Dame? Notre Dame fans have to know this name or are going to know this name in game one there uh, in early September. Uh, I guess I'll kind of give you a little bit of a sleeper. Uh, I'll give you Malik Silla. I mean, this guy yeah. is tall. He is long. He's fast. He's coming off the edge at 6'6", about 250, 245 pounds. Uh, this dude is getting better and better every single year. So, like, it's just a matter of, like, when is this dude going to pop off the page? I have a feeling it's going to be this year. You will see him on third down packages, you know. What I'm excited for, though, is the third down package where you move Nick Scorn in the interior, and then you have Malik Silla on the outside there uh, with Shamar Stewart. That's going to be a nasty third down package because you got the so fourth down. Scary. Shamar Stewart, you got Nick Scorn in the interior, which because Nick Scorn can play interior, by the way. <laughs> he can do that. Uh, and then you got Malik Silla or Nye White, and then Shamar Stewart coming off the edge. Yes, the Silla is the name I love here. I, I think he's a guy from Katy, Texas, a guy that was hurt in high school and was yep. already raw as it was. Um, a guy that you know kind of got underlooked in that 2022 class of everyone because he was he was like the seventh best defense lineman he signed. He was still a top 65 player nationally, uh, which is just crazy in that group. But he's a guy I think that went under the radar, and I love that you you, you brought him up here. It sounds like you put on some weight. Uh, and obviously refining those tools. Again, yeah. he's also another guy where if it's just one-on-one -on -one with a tackle or even just maybe some slow right tackle, I mean, he can just bend at just speed rush, finesse his way out to the quarterback and just be a nightmare yeah. this year for opposing teams. 
nine pressures and 80 snaps. I mean, you know, that, that's, those are pretty good numbers. But, like, if that increases at all, like, that pressure percentage, like, he's just fast, man, and long. Like, it'll be really interesting, man, to see where he's at this year. So that, that's a name I'd say college football fans should, like, watch out for. You know, he might not be the starter on downs one and two, but on third down, you know, you're going to watch, look for 92 and – he might be getting home into the quarterback more than your team would like him to. I love it. 